Hello and welcome back to the Danfoss Drive School at the Marine Competence Center in Holmestrand, Norway. In this episode 4 on the permanent magnet motors, we are going to do the parameters and tuning of this 22 kW Editron motor. We are going to utilize this NXP drive using NC drive for the setup. Our setup looks like this. We have an active front end so that we can have our DC link which we can manipulate, voltage, regenerative. We have the NXP drive connected to our Editron motor with resolver. We have the laptop computer with a serial connection and also a canvas connection for the parameters and setups. We are going to utilize the Marine application for this. Episode 4 is a 20 minute session where we do the basic setups, the parameters, how to do it, the open loop and understanding the UF curve so that you can basically set up the Editron motor for running without the closed loop, only with the competence here. It's going down the rabbit hole. It's uh, competence for commissioning and service engineers. Episode five is for the more advanced closed loop and resolver settings, how to do the tuning there. I have control startups, which can be used both for the UF control and also for the sensorless closed loop startups. The sensorless closed loop, how to tune it, how to understand it. Overspeeding 1.5 times of nominal motor speed. Why? Vinch manufacturer in some cases have the need for active heat compensation and uh, spool out situations to run these motors way beyond the motor nominals. How to do it? What does it require by our diesel link and the rest of the system to do that? The minimum amount of parameters that we have set is the motor nominals and selecting what type of motor and some few other stuff in the motor control. That is the minimum just to spin the motor in an open loop. Let's see. The motor nominals is these ones. It is the voltage, frequency, RPM, and especially this is really, really important to, for the drive to know the pole number. Amperes and kilowatt and efficiency. Everything is found here on the motor plate. So basically this is what goes in there. Let's do. For my specific motor, I select these basic parameters. I start with 100 Hertz for the maximum frequency because that is my motor nominal. 500 volt and it hits 500 volt at 100 Hertz. This gives the motor back EMF curve. 1000 RPM nominal at 100 Hertz. This gives that is a six pole motor. Nominal current of this motor is 31 ampere. It is a cosinus phi of um, 95, I think. 94. Uh, nominal power is 22 kilowatts. Do I need 22 kilowatt for doing the training? No. Tuning can be done at quite lower kilowatts. Magnetizing current. This is not the induction motor, so nothing. Motor type. I select PMSM, that is Permanent Magnet Synchronous Machine. There is also other parameters I want to have a look at before I start any tuning. And one of them is the limit settings. The current limit here is 31 ampere. I want actually the maximum which this drive can give. Let's say if I try to give it 55 amperes. No, 44 is the maximum, so that is the, all I can get. I want all of those amperes when I'm doing tuning. Now that I have done my motor basic parameters, the drive know what type of motor I'm doing, there is also some other parameters that I want to check. Because default parameters in the marine application basically is for induction motors, so when I get to a permanent magnet motor there are some changes. I go to the motor control. And here I make sure that I'm in frequency control, that's the default, nothing much down here. Um, the slip adjust, we, we don't have any slip to adjust in a 
permanent magnet motor. So we put this to 100%. Um, other stuff. If we look at um, torque stabilization, 2872, that's down here. This one is now set to 980, which is typical for permanent magnet motors, just straight out of the manual. Um, the current limit, if we go to the limits here, limit settings. When we do the tuning, I have now selected the highest current which my small NXP drive can give. The motor was 31 ampere, but I want more because I want the full nominal plus a good margin so that the drive can give the reactive current during uh, the identification runs. Also later when you run the motor, you want it to have some extra current to be able to give the reactive current for dynamics, for accelerations and stuff. So basically the current limit, you put it to quite high, way more than the motor nominal. Because the really limits that protect the motor will be from the motor basic parameters. It will not overload the motor. And also the torque limits, power limits and everything is given down here. The torque limits here sits to 300% default. That's quite a lot. Um, during the tuning, the most important thing is that they are not too low. 300 is a little bit big. So in a real life big scenario, maybe you put 150 and uh, the torque limit here will then be for both the braking and the acceleration. So leave this. The rest, quite high limits. Uh, another thing, when you run from the laptop computer, you maybe select that you have I.O. control so that you don't get this fault that, hey, the keypad is not there. Actually, now the keypad is there, but normally if you have a serial cable, you will get an alarm for this. I'm now running on the canvas, so I don't have to remove my keypad. In the drive control, I have selected 3.6 kilohertz. Actually, that is the default switching frequency um, in the marine application. 3.6 is a good uh, something between not too high, which gives IGBT over temp if you push it too hard, and not too small, because that will give a pulse width re resolution, which is too small for a permanent magnet motor. So 3.6 is a quite common number for uh, most permanent magnet motors. Software 1. Do not select ASIC. Don't uh, do software 2 either. Software 1 is the one. And don't change these parameters later because then you have to do the identification runs one more time. In advanced options there is nothing right now but we will change that after a little while. Especially if you have wrong direction on the motor instead of changing cable you can fix it here. We will see. Okay, now that we got the motor parameters in, we go to the motor control, make sure that we have frequency control. We look at the UF curve and this linear curve, we start with that one. Hey, UF mid frequency is not 50 Hertz. It's uh, supposed to be 100 Hertz. So we need to correct that one. 100, Ta -da. what does this mean? It means that uh, the drive will set out a voltage at zero frequency at 1.37% of 500 volt, that is about 7 volts. So, how does this look on our BEM curve? You're familiar with this one. The motor itself, if you spin it, it will produce this back EMF voltage. And this um, uh, orange color is now our linear UF curve. Here we start at 7 volt, which will produce some kind of current. And then up to nominal, it will probably uh, stop here. So actually the current will be a little bit up and then go down in linear. And this is just a rotation check. This is just to make sure that the motor runs in correct direction. Everything is smooth and nice on the mechanical side. 
So, okay, let's try to spin this thing. Here we are ready for the first startup. Typically, we start up at zero speed, and that is after we have made sure that the shaft is free rotating. If there is a gearbox shear propeller here, if it's possible to disconnect, we do that. If the propeller is not possible to disconnect, zero pitch, it's a good thing. Um, we start it at zero speed. We go to this one and we go zero. Here we see a current of 4.1 ampere and a voltage of 7 voltage and it sits there nicely. Of course, the shaft is now blocked because of the current. If we want to run it at a very slow speed, 5% or something, and here we see that the current still is quite low, 31 volt. And here we can see that the output frequency is the same as the encoder frequency. So these ones actually run in the same direction. This is good. And here we can see now that my shaft, it rotates clockwise. What if the ship propeller actually want to go in the other direction? So this is wrong direction. Of course, you can go to the motor cables and change it there, but there is an easier way. Uh, you stop the motor, you go to the parameters for advanced option seven, and you put bit five, which is decimal value 32 and viola. When you start it now, it runs Seems like same direction, but physically you have changed the motor phase as UVW. So now it viola rotates in the correct propeller direction without any electricians need to do a big job. They will be happy to not change the cables. We are now ready to run the motor to its nominal RPM. But first thing, mechanical guys approve it's safe, disconnected, flat pitch or whatever. Then the DC voltage. DC voltage is now 587 volt, and that is too small to produce the nominal 500 AC volt, which takes to the motor. Relation between DC and AC is square root of two, so we need minimum 720 volts to produce 500 volt. We start the active front then, and it goes to 740 volts, so it should be no problem going to the AC voltage of 500 volt. We see this on the modulation index when we start running the motor. We start up zero speed as always. Looks normal. 4.2. Go up to maybe half speed. Current looks nice. Current is almost the same as the torque so we see that we are following the UF curve of the drive here and the di difference between the back EMF curve and uh, the uh, UF curve from the drive is so small that the voltage between here is driving a very small current. Okay, then we go to 100 hertz. Yes, and the current now is 0 0.5 amperes. Everything running smooth and nice. We are now at this point, and the drive UF curve is probably the same as the motor BAM, and then the current is almost nothing. What if the DC voltage would not be enough? Let's stop the active front end. It still runs at 100 RPM. The current went up because it's now using the current to suppress the motor voltage. The motor voltage is now 400. 50 and that is a lot less than the 500 volt nominal so this is not a good situation for tuning the motor so the dc voltage is quite important to get everything right you could hear in the motor something changed when i increased the vo dc voltage to 740 now we got the correct motor voltage of 500 volts so be aware of the dc voltage before you start any advanced tuning of the motor we are now ready for doing the identification run without rotation. I have, before this, saved a parameter list, so I have something to compare before and after the identification. I go to the basic parameters to the identification, and here I select ID no run. Then, within 20 seconds, I have to hit the start button, and something will happen. Here is a current going on, and what actually is going on is 
measuring of the impedance in the cables and the state of windings. So there is a quite big current going on, 21 ampere. Remember the nominal is 31. There's some strange sounds coming. And now it's finished. And here I can see from these symbols that there is no faults. So this went well. Okay, I also do one identification run now with rotation. So I select with rotation and same thing. I go to the start button and I sit back, no hands, and it will do identification run without rotation first. And then it will start rotating after this. It is important that the shaft is free. And if there had been a ship propeller on now, uh, there is quite limited how much torque you can um, tolerate during ID run. Okay, now it was finished and the rotation has stopped. I can see from my status here that it went well. Okay, now I disconnect the drive and I compare it from before. After uploading the parameters sitting in the NXP control module and sitting here, we can do a compare to the previous parameters. So, before ID, it was then the parameters on this side. So, Let's see what's the differences. Uh, it's typical the UF curve. We have now not a linear UF curve anymore. We have a programmable. Field weakening point is to 77.39%. Uh, the UF mid frequency and mid voltage is adjusted. So this is quite uh, interesting. Um, zero frequency voltage is adjusted quite up. So hoo hoo. Um, the drive want to have a UF curve with more aggressive current and this is a normal thing because if you want to run in open loop you want to have a very strong current to pull the magnets in place and keep the polar angle. Current controller has been adjusted up a lot then is parameters for the hardware of the drive. Also concerned about this but we need to see what this UF curve actually means on my graph. So let's draw it up how it was identified. When looking at the result from the ID run, we can here see the programmable UF curve produced by the ID run. It's quite higher voltage than the linear UF curve we started with. The linear UF curve created a very low current of 1 2 ampere which there is a danger that you lose the polar angle. So it's not really usable for a loaded shaft. It's okay when the shaft is spinning free. Here, with a customized UF curve, we see that the current go up to about 50% of the motor nominal, 15 ampere. And here at the mid, when it's starting up, you, you have a boosted current. So it is really strong to pull the magnets and keep the polar angle. Then it keeps about 50% of the current, motor nominal current, and then it reduces. Here on an unloaded shaft it goes down to about uh, one, two ampere or something. If the shaft had been loaded, you would see a higher current because the impedance in the permanent magnet motor, it will be decreased when the, the polar angle uh, increase. So, so th that kind of adjusts the current up. So this is a full working open loop setting. You can run a thruster, bow thrust or anything in this configuration. Um, we are now running without a resolver. The uh, advantage is less complexity. The disadvantages is that we have a high reactive current even at low speed references. So the efficiency on the motor is not the best on the lower power OTEX. To be able to see the UF curve more in clarity, easier to compare to the whiteboard, I will now start the motor to going a ramp for 5 seconds up to 100 speed. So we start and it just start rotating and we have our ramping up to 100 hertz and we go straight down again just to see how our UF curve looks like. Okay, 
let's see what this idrun actually did. Here at zero speed we can see that the motor voltage is 19 volt as predicted and this gives a current of about half motor nominal 15.5. So here we are stand still and this produces a motor torque of almost 50%. So this is ideal for an open loop startup. You will pull the magnet so the polar angle is correct. Then we start rotating. Here we can see that the current is uh, a little bit higher, slightly, and uh, we get a rotation. The green curve is the motor curve, it goes down. There is a free shaft here. And here we can see the relation between the motor voltage and the frequency. The voltage increase all the way up here to field weakening point. And look, we are at 500 volts, more or less. And this happens at 78%. Remember this field weakening point uh, from the idea run, it was set to some 77 point something. So this means that the voltage will go up to 500 volt here. The current is not more than 14 ampere. When we increase the speed of the motor, then the UF curve will hit almost the nominal and we sit here at 100 Hertz, which is nominal. The current is almost nothing and the motor voltage sits constant at 500 volt. Modulation index is 95% when our DC voltage is 745 volts. It means that we have enough DC voltage to produce these 500 volts. So this is a good one. So this is a setting where this motor actually could do a good job in a practical installation thruster or anything in an open loop setting. So this is actually the complete tuning of an open loop system. And you, you find this um, in um, rim thrusters, thrusters without encoders and so on. You can set it up this. You can also set it up for sensorless closed loop and eye of control. So in next episode, we will cover quite detailed how you do the IF startup and also do the sensorless closed loop. So roll over to the next uh, episode, which is episode five. And there we start with the hardware closed loop, go to the IF control, do the sensorless, and then also start overspeeding the motor, which is quite a cool thing.